Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Dyson Sphere Program where I'm um, going to give you my weekly update of, the, of how things went on the stream on uh, on back on Wednesday. So let's see what what have I doing, been doing this week. Well, if you remember last week, uh, let's let's do a little quick recap. I started doing these um, little off-bus town systems for making some of the things that are required in large quantities. So here is my uh, my setup for making green circuits, and we've got so we've got a tower here. I'm using one of oh, I'm actually using one of the uh, the big towers here. We're feeding out the, uh, the the iron ore and the copper ore, and then that's being made over here into green circuits. And I'm using the painter machines here as well. This means I get a boost of 20% on my output for all of the inputs. It would be a bit more than that, but um, I didn't really plan ahead for the painters, so I'm using direct insertion out of the smelting machine straight into the assembly machine, and that means there isn't a space in in between to paint the uh, the stuff that's being put into here. So I'm getting I'm getting 120% of the uh, green circuits out compared for the amount of um, resources I'm putting in, but I'm not getting the extra um, I'm not getting an additional 20% boost, which I would would do if I'd remembered to do that, which is a bit of a shame, but Celavi. I've also discovered you can stand on top of assembly machines like this and, and other buildings too, which is a uh, which is lovely. So after I did that, I then came over here, did exactly the same thing for um, building up blue blue science. I then went on and, and, uh, and made and made a similar thing for the blue blue science. So again, we I, again because I didn't think it through enough sufficiently, I'm using direct insertion once again. So we've got the iron ore coming in, being made into magnets. Magnets going in, being made into coils. This one I probably just about could have squeezed, maybe could have squeezed a painter into a bit of an effort. And copper as well being made, and um, and then feeding in here, making blue blue science. So that's going well. And we've got in here, we've got the tower with all of the appropriate stuff in it. So this is this is working nicely. There's not a great deal of paint in there. I think that's probably okay though, because it's well, there seems to be there seems to be enough in stock. So now we get onto this week. So my my first thing, first project this week was to make red red science in a similar sort of way. So here we've got a massive array of red red science making machines because red science is quite a lot slower to make than uh, blue science. So where I had these three stacks of five, here I've got thirty. So I've got thirty. So I've gone from fifteen to thirty because it takes twice as long to make. So that makes make that makes perfect sense. The numbers the numbers match up quite nicely there. But also more importantly. I've gone in, and because I've, I've gone in now, and I've put the the, the belts feeding in and out like this, um, which means I can then run everything through a, through painting machines down over here, in order to get those the resources repainted for for, for the next lot for the for next whatever is going on. Um, now I don't know why I've stacked these here because it's not going to fit any more onto the belt than if I didn't stack them. Um, <laughs> Maybe it's oh, it's probably to speed up the amount, the rate that they can be taken in because these are quite tall stacks. So if I ran this at norm, if I didn't stack them, then these inserters might not be able to put these stuff into here quickly enough in order to make all of the science. So what have we what we've got here? We're making the we're making the energized carbon, energized carbon, energetic graphite, close enough, on on site here. So out out of coal. So that's that's smelted into into the um, energized. Energized graph, energetic graphite, um, and then over here, then we're, we're pulling the hydrogen straight out of the system here as well, and that is then, as you can see, making red science as fast as we need it to. Now we're not doing any science at the moment, not doing any research at the moment, so these machines are all, have all gone idle. But it does mean I've now got a supply of 2,000 red science in here, and presumably um, 4,000 blue science in this one. So I mean, I, I could, I could bump this up to 4,000 as well, like that. And then you'll see, as you as you see, these these machines all light up as as it goes. It, it um, the belt here will start to go straight into the into the into the tower, and as it clears, and as we pull pull the science app packs out of all of these machines, the uh, they'll they'll start to kick in and, and start producing the science again, so to giving us all all of the resources we need. And this is this is working nicely. I'm uh, I'm pleased with this. And the ratios are not quite right here. These ratios, I, I put these ratios together as if there weren't any of the painters in there. So we're we're slightly overproducing on the on the carbon, but. I don't really care because it's not—it's it's only going to be a sort of a—it's only, it's only going to be 10, 20 percent. So maybe I could knock out one or two of these, a couple of these machines on either side. Oh no, I do need to stack them. That's what. Yeah, okay. So I've got, yeah, because of the sheer quantity of this that I need, I've got um, a column over here making cut, making the graphite, and a column over here making the graphite. They're both stacking it and then feeding it into into a splitter here. Um, and that means because I've got two two belts feeding in double high stacks, uh, half half a belt each essentially, I can then have a full belt of double stacked coming out here. So that means I can have enough pro enough stuff coming through in order to keep all these machines happy. Um, and that is because if we look in here, can we see the recipe for this? Yes, it's two. It requires two of each. So the rate I'm trying to make everything at is 
basically it's five per second which is very very nearly a full belt and with the 20 percent boost in in uh, productivity from all from the, all the resources being painted is in fact a full a full belt going coming out here so this should be more essentially full as it, as it flows through and so that means that we need to have full belts worth going in on this side but because each of these each of these requires two of each of the inputs the belts have to be double stacked or have to be two belts so these are all double stacked you can't really tell with the with the, uh, the graphite but take my word for it they're all double stacked and that means these belts should essentially be flowing at full speed they don't seem to be um, I'm not quite sure why these numbers don't quite seem to add up but it's, it is producing a very healthy quantity of red, red science here so I'm basically happy with that so I then carried on with this basic theory Stand on the uh, stand on the dish, trying not to break it. Come over here. I carried on with this basic theory, and then moved on to my next uh, my next challenge was to start making the processors. So I'd been looking at what was going on on the um, on on the bus way over there, and I'd noticed that some of the um, some of the science packs. I think it was purple. I think purple science was lagging very very badly because it didn't have enough processors. And processors are quite expensive things to build. So I thought, well, let's move it out here. We'll get a nice steady flow of stuff coming in. And if I need more, then I can always build out more of these sort of these sticks sticking out into in whatever direction. Now this is this is encroached. This this paint system is over here, which I'll talk about later, is encroached a bit. But there's still room for at least a chunk of it here. Maybe another one going off that way. <clears throat> and with this, we can fit um, probably three systems onto here because we've got each one of these using, yeah each one of these is using four outputs and we've got 12 in to we've got 12 in total because there's three on each side so I could stick three copies of this system onto there now as usual all of this is caught up because I'm not doing any science at the moment we've got a, a supply of a full 10,000 um, uh, processors in the in, in the machine so we're doing really well here and this was again this this one was the, the first yeah this was the first one where I actually made with no now, Red Science was the first one. This is the second one that I made with, with thinking about painting the stuff, in, in taking the, the painting into consideration. So we've got the belts feeding out, going through a painter, coming back all the way along here, and going back out again, through, again once again, through a painter matron. And here, everything is, is one to one, I think. So we, we look, look at this one. It takes. Um, yeah, it takes one copper ore to make one copper plate. Here it takes. One copper ore. Oh, and two two silicon. So presumably that means yes. Over here, I've stacked the silicon. There's a stacker in over here. And so the way well, I've done the usual tr my previous trick over here of having a green belt coming out of here, going into the stacker, and then going onto a yellow belt to save costs, so re resource costs for building the belts over here. So this means we get we're getting the full we're getting twice as much silicon through, which means this machine here is happy because it needs twice as much silicon. But we're still able to chuck a full belt of the uh, of the electronic components back out again down here. We then have another machine over here, and if we look at this recipe, this is taking in two of each. Um, so I'm not actually stacking here; I'm just only making half as many. So this won't actually be producing a full a full belt when it's running flat out. I can't really. I mean, can I take some out of here? I don't think I can. Uh, this won't actually be producing a full belt going out, but it's producing half a belt, and that's pretty good. It's a de it's a decent amount of of stuff, and actually, it's slightly more than half a belt because all of the ingredients are painted. So we'll have we'll have 50% um, plus 20% of 50%. So we'll have 55. We'll have 60% of a belt coming out of here. So that's not, that's not too bad. It, it's it, it, it's a reasonable quantity and it's, it's better than what I was producing before and there's now a massive massive supply available in here so we can take it away by um, by logistics robot and, and, and everything should then be fine. So yeah these are all getting put into the tower as you'd expect. If I fly back over into the base and yes I'm not I'm not an evil sadist so I should speed this bit up for you. You'll see that over here this is where we were previously making the processors on the bus and actually we've got almost as many machines here so this would probably be almost would have been almost as quick as the system over on the other side one two three five six seven no okay not quite as quick I think we've got about more like 12 over there but anyway I've got a I've got another tower here that's summoning in two and a half thousand um, uh, circuit processors at a time and then dumping them straight just simply dumping them out onto the bus here and that so they can be then passed off into the factory and because these are before these machines these will take priority so I'll use the ones that are being made out on the um, out in the in the town first and then if for some reason there's a shortage of those then we'll start to top it up with ones that are coming off the bus so there's a couple of reasons I've not removed this area here the first one is because I actually require the um, electronics components for a couple of the builds further down the bus so those are being fed out onto the bus as well so I don't want to get rid of these 
And secondly, it's because I do want, as I said, I want to have this as an emergency backup supply, just in case the uh, the supply from the, from the through the logistics system runs out for whatever reason. So that way, I'll still be able to produce the the processes that are needed for some of the machines that will need them. Not so much the science, because if that's um, at that point, if the if the, uh, if the the machines generally can't keep up, then I'll probably want to slow that down a bit. But I'm not producing them off here for a couple of reasons. One is because this isn't uh, productivity painted, so it, it won't produce as it, it, I won't get the free stuff from here. And also because this is being fed off the bus and that means that everything that's demanding well what have we got coming in here we've got silicon we've got um with the oil no copper we've got um green circuits all of those coming in off the bus so there'll be demand from whatever is being provided down the bus and i don't want to use i don't want to put extra load on the bus if i can help it because the bus might be useful for other things so this is only an emergency backup while I'm over here, I will acknowledge that I think I think I made this. Is it this one that requires the processors? Yes, it is. I made, so I made the extra processor supply because, as I say, the purple science is running out of processors, and I haven't moved that off the bus yet. I have. While I'm over here, I have also put in an, 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 an additional tower here, which I managed to squeeze in by picking up some of these magnet machines, which I think aren't really needed anymore because we're making the green circuits elsewhere because green circuits needed those. So I've put in this one, and this tower is taking in um, refined oil and hydrogen in massive quantities. Um, I say massive quantities, as, as massive as the system is capable of providing. And we're very, very short of refined oil. We've got a decent amount of hydrogen, but very short of refined oil. So my hope was that this this this, this processing or oil processing system I have here would be able to keep up. That's not been the case. So next session, I think I'm probably going to have to open more or less with um, building another bigger oil refinery in an attempt to get this stuff out quicker, faster, more efficiently and just get the supplies available for everything I'm trying to use. So back out to the towns again. So I've talked about the processes over here. The final assembly I built over here was this behemoth. This monstrosity, this juggernaut of building essentially if you will um, and there's a lot of stuff going on over here so this is this is as you can see here from that oil these oil um, drones that are dropping in here this is why we don't have any oil anymore because this system that's making the blue science is just ripping through all of it um, you can see we don't have very much here we've got a little bit coming in we've got plenty of titanium we've got plenty of well we've got a some coal uh, that actually that's that's a shortage as well um, and we've got actually quite a bit of um, yellow science being produced so it's it's it is going. It is producing, but it's a, but it's a, it's, it's a deep, it's a big and involved process. So, what are you doing over here? That's so drastic, you might, you might ask. Well, over here, I've got once again. I'm making the um, the energetic carbon, um, energetic graphite. Sorry, uh, that's coming in here along this belt. And once again, it takes. Is it this? This is a two to one, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's two to one. So I've got a double stacked belt coming in. And as ever, I've done the double stack with a green belt coming out of here into a stacker. So double stack of coal coming in here, single belt, and therefore that's that would be if everything was running flat out. That would be a solid double belt going in there and a solid single belt coming out. Uh, except for slight complications, which I shall, complication, which I shall talk about in a moment, and that's getting painted. Everything, everything is getting painted. You can see how the belts loop back round and go through the painters here, just to make sure everything is getting that juicy, juicy 20% bonus. Then it turns out if you cook the graphite again, you, you can then turn it into diamonds, and that's a one-to-one. -one. So at this point, we're fine with the single belt coming in here and a single single high belt coming out. That's 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 absolutely fine. That's what we need. If it turned out that the game was mean and this required a double stack as well, then I'd have to have two double stacks of coal coming out of here, two sets of this, and then have them all stack up and feed it back out. Or maybe I'd have two I'd have two double stacks of coal coming out, and I'd make the diamonds from each one, and then merge those belts together but fortunately that's not required and if we look in here it only takes the one diamond but it also also takes one titanium crystal those are a bit more complicated so we come over here we can see that we're making here we are making the titanium crystals um, and this is this is okay to make a titanium crystal you need uh, one uh, one organic crystal and three titanium so you, you add a titanium to a crystal and you get a titanium crystal makes sense uh, so what I've done here is I've got two double belts of titanium coming out. So that's actually that's actually four belts effectively, which is one more than the three this actually needs. But I thought let's not mess around. Let's just let's just double it. It's, it's easier that way. And so I've got two banks of these machines here. One one bank being fed by each of these double belts, and then a single belt of the organic crystals coming up the middle and feeding everything, feeding in as far as it can. Now this is currently we we have a shortage of stuff here, so we we can't get as much in as we would like. But we're getting at least getting some of this in, and so there's some production being done. 
So yes, that's that one. Then over here, we've got these machines that make the uh, the organic crystals, which is um, one one water, one oil, and two plastic. So in theory, coming in here, we'll have one oil, one belt of oil, one belt of oil, water, and we should have two belts of plastic, but this doesn't seem to be stacked. Probably maybe because there's a shortage of it. I don't know, but that's never going to work at the right ratio then. We're going to need to make sure we get a lot more plastic coming through here. I'm not at this point, I'm not quite sure whether I've made a mistake on the amount that's being fed through here or whether it's just down to the, the amount that we're currently producing and it, it, that's the problem. Um, we'll have to investigate that in the next session. I think. Um, or actually, no, there's a secret option number three that might be the case, that might be the, uh, the actual case here. So yeah, that's we've got the, the oil, the water, and the water's coming out of all these pumps here, and the plastic flowing in, and it's getting, well, the plastic's getting uh, almost halfway around. It's getting to about there. So we need about twice as much coming through. The problem is, as you can see here, there's a distinct shortage of refined oil. Now, over here, we're actually all right, because there isn't. this is only asking for one belt of it. It's coming out sufficiently quickly. Over here, we're asking for a double high belt, and it's just it's, it's just not keeping up. As you can see, we get these little bursts of it coming out, and it, go, it goes into the system over here. It's just, it's just not enough. So over here, because over here, we are trying to make that plastic, and that's a massive array of machines, as you can see, 4, 8, 12, 16, 18, 18 of these machines, and I think there's 21 of those machines. So all of these things, it's just covering massive, massive areas, trying to produce the, science, the, the yellow science at the same rate that I've been doing over there with the blue and the red. But... I mean, the numbers of machines are all good, it's just we haven't got the inputs of the resources. So over here, once again, we've got the usual sort of shenaniganry. We've got, in theory, a double stack. We've run out of coal as well. That's even even worse. Um, so we've got a double... We should theoretically have a double stack of coal coming through here. That's being cooked into a single belt of um, of, of energetic carbon, uh, graphite. Then that's being cooked and chemical planted into into the plastic with all of this stuff. But And the, the recipe for this is presumably fairly mean, I, I guess. Okay, no, it's, it's one... It's one carbon and two oil, which is why the oil is being double stacked. As ever, everything's being painted over here as well. <laughs> so we're then turning all of this, in, yeah, all of this into plastic, whatever rate we can. Now the belts snake in and out, as you can see here. It looks like we're getting about the, the, the oil is getting around to about here. Maybe occasional little bits are getting around a little bit further. But basically, we've got a third of this system working at the moment, which is why we've not got remotely enough plastic. Um, now, I am thinking that because we've got so little of this working and this belt is still relatively full, I might need to put in a few more things. Let's have a look at the numbers here. So we've got 18 belts produced, 18 machines producing it. It takes no, it takes three seconds each. So actually, no, this is a full belt. So 18 divided by three, three, 18 machines divided by three seconds is six. Six per plastic per second, which is what will fit on a belt. So the reason that I'm producing that at a slower rate than what I said everything else is going to need is because we've done some maths. I say we because uh, while I was in the stream, it was actually Mark doing most of the maths for me because he, was, he wasn't trying to stream, therefore he could have a calculator open and be plugging numbers into it. So uh, much appreciated there. Thank you very much for helping. Um, and so because in order to get a full belt coming out here, you can then multiply or divide by 1.2 for each step. So over here, making the graphite, you, well, make, making the diamonds, yeah, the belt needs to have 6 divided by 1.2 per second in order to keep this full, in order to keep it satisfied. To make the diamonds, we're also painting the we're painting the inputs for that as well. So you need, in order to keep the diamond machine happy producing at 6 divided by 1.2, you need to pass them in at 6 divided by 1.2 divided by 1.2, or 6 divided by 1.2 squared. Um, and so that's the, and then so you don't need even less coal coming. You need even less coal coming in. So you've got six divided by 1.2 for this. Six divided by 1.2 squared. Six divided by 1.2 cubed for this. So it's even slower. So actually, we, it's quite, it's almost possible we don't need to double stack it. I suspect we still probably do, but it's getting, it's getting close. Over here, there's even more steps. So you've got going, you've got these coming in at divide by 1.2. These coming in at divided by 1.2 squared. This then coming in at actually two. Is it two? Yes, two divided by 1.2 cubed, which I, I think I, I ended up reckoning was probably close enough to one that I'll just sort of deal with it not being quite enough, at least for now, and see how it goes. Then over here, it's it's um, six divided six per second divided by 1.2 
uh, to the power 4 for the inputs here, and then divided by 1.2 to the power 5. So actually, there's not very much coal required going in here, which is part of the reason this belt is going so slowly. The other part is because we don't have enough oil, so this is running very, very slowly in general. But yeah, that's the um, that's the power of maths, and I'll put and all these numbers I'll have put up on screen, so you can see what these they actually mean, and whether my guess is how far out I am with my guess that one belt of plastic coming through here is going to be enough. Now, if it turns out that it isn't, I can always put another plastic production facility. More, I can expand the plastic production facility, but I'd rather not have to if I can avoid it because this is this is already a bit obscenely sized. Uh, it's getting a little bit ridiculous. But even yeah, even with all of the problems I've been talking about, this bell is it's not full, but it's not doing too badly. We're getting a decent supply of um, yellow signs coming out. As you can see, this is and this is this is filled up quite a bit since I looked at it earlier. I can't I can't remember what that was on, but we've got a lot more of it than we did before. I haven't started taking the yellow signs over there yet, but it is yeah, it's coming through very nicely. So eventually. I will bring the, all of the yellow science over by logistics bot, much like I've done with the, um, the red science and the blue science, and we'll start dropping that off over here, where we've got a machine. We've got a tower here that's currently outputting the red science. The blue science is coming out of that one for reasons I can't remember. I might have had reasons at the time. I can't remember what those were now. But we can only get four. This is a planetary logistics station. Okay, so we can only get four in here. Um, we've currently got um, we've currently got four different types of science, but there's a fifth one that I'm going to be de developing fairly soon, and there's a, there is eventually a sixth and final one. So I am going to need another tower, or possibly just get another one of the science packs out of here. That's probably going to be easier. So yeah, we will eventually feed the yellow science out of here, rip up all of the yellow science production over here, and just say that's been now taken off the bus. You can stop worrying about it here. And then the next project will be the purple science, which is going to be even more complicated and absolutely horrendous. So yes, those are those are my sort of current current things on the on the list to do for next time. Oil processing. Generally, all of the supplies and things needed for all of this stuff. Ooh, pretty. And then, yeah, maybe starting to think about getting the purple science off. Maybe starting to think about developing green science. I don't know. It's all going to be a massive headache. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm, um, I also should produce a cheat sheet that has um, all of the inverse factors of one point of six of one point two. So it's six divided by one point two repeatedly until it's a until it's used, until it's a, a silly silly number of divisions. So that's for next time. But there is speaking of um, of resources and things like that. I did get to the point where I start as you as you saw over in the yellow science production area. I'm starting to run a bit low on a lot of the resources. So looking in here, we've got a shortage of coal. We've got a shortage of titanium. We've got a shortage of oil. We've got a shortage of paint. Although I have actually because we had a shortage of paint, I thought well paint is just just coal, but it's coal repeatedly processed. So let's just make the paint here. So we've got coal being turned into graphite, into, into diamond, we've got then they're going into paint, they've got the diamond and the paint one being turned into paint two. So we've got a bit of it flowing out here. It's barely enough to keep up with the demand, but I when I've got when I've got a bit more coal available, hopefully then it will be it will be sufficient. So yes, supplies are a bit of a, a bit of a problem. So I mean I can I can put some no I can't I can't even put more robots in here. That, that won't help because there's already 86 of them not being used. There's just a shortage of coal being produced on this planet. So I'm gonna need to go out, gonna need to make make some more coal mines, put them on the logistics networks. There's one there with about a million. There's Um, one there with about just over a million. Yeah, so there's, there's a few. There's a few coal mines. There's another one there, eight hundred thousand. So there's a few more coal mines scattered around. So I, I can I can go out and start harvesting those. There's, uh, yeah, basically basically like this. We just put down some miners, have them scoop it off in straight into a tower. This tower seems to be not very full. Okay. So what I should be doing here is each of these should be feeding into a separate a separate belt going into the tower because this is blocking itself and it's not not mining as quickly as it might do. So I should maybe I'll come out and fix that if I remember. However, on the subject of um, of resources, I'm going to charge the robot up. Uh, so I'll be back in a second once I've got it, once I've got power and can demonstrate what I want to talk about. Right, back again. Okay, so the other problem I, was, I, I ran into, and the pro problem I ran into in the last stream and fixed, and I've now got a sort of a slightly different version of this of, of the same problem, is that I was starting to run out of some of the other things that I um, need. Let's go this way. Open up that way. So. I started to run out of. Well, you, you saw I was running out of titanium. I was also running out of um, out of out of silicon from from making probably because of making all the green circuits and all of the um, um, all of the processors because that, that that takes an enormous amount of silicon, which kind of makes sense because circuit, uh, circuits circuits take a lot of silicon, and I think one of the sciences required a load of it as well.
Uh, so I then had to go back out to um, a leaf of three. And fortunately, my, my mech can now do 2,000 meters per second. So it took a little bit less time. I'll still fast forward for you for you, the sake of you guys. So yes, I had to come back out to a leaf of three again and boost the silicon production. So what I've done is I've started. I put down a number of these mine systems like this. And the, the, what, what I've done here, there's, there's four of them, which is a fairly arbitrary number. I could have put more. I could have put. Few, uh, I could have put uh, fewer. But the reason I but four seemed like a good number, and you'll notice that every single vein is um, is being mined. So you've got you've got these sort of the, the mining drills put these sort of these rings around the veins when they when they not when they claim them because others can share them as well, but when they're going to be trying to pull stuff up out of them. So you can see every single one, every single vein has got a, has got a loop around it. So that means we are actually pulling the silicon ore out of every single one of those. Now let's see. Can we? Where, where is where is the actual base? It's okay. It's over there. I have, as always, landed on pretty much the opposite side of the planet from where I wanted to be. But you know, that's just that's just the way it goes. There's iron available here as well in quite large quantities. So that's, that's um, worth considering. So now, if I come around here, uh, not you. This this one over here. This area. Oh no, yeah, it is this area over here. So what I've got here now is this big tower here. This is this is a just a planetary logistics station, the small one, and that's requesting. Uh, silicon ore in massive quantities. So that's being brought to it from all of the mines. I've got, okay, so I've got a mine set up here which is running. I don't know why that one's not running. Uh, oh, I've not linked the belt to it properly, apparently. But anyway, I've got I've got sufficient silicon coming in here. That that's not actually too much of a worry. Then on the output here, I'm stacking this up to too high uh, on all of them. The usual way, green belt coming out, whacking it through a through, through a stacker, and then out on onto these belts here. Um, and this is to get dub double. Oh no, no, I haven't. No, no, I'd run out of green belts. I remember. So each one of these is a, is a yellow belt coming out and stacking it, and then we're merging them here like this, which means we can still get a double belt flowing along here. And the reason I've done that is because it actually takes two silicon ores to make one silicon plate. So if we've doubled it along here, as I was saying earlier with with making the um, en energetic graphite, if you put if you put a double belt going in and a single belt coming out, then that's balanced, and you can get you can actually get a full belt coming out. So I've done that three times over. Um, there's there's room to do it one just once more over here. Actually, by the looks of it, this one. Oh no, I had I had enough green belt to do to, to get a, to to do that one the, the traditional way. Um, so if I come over here with some green belt, then I can expand this quite a lot actually. But at the moment, this is this is good enough. As you can see by the fact this this system isn't, isn't running anymore, uh, we can now feed out massive quantities of silicon into here. We've got loads of silicon. That's great. No problems there at all. So, um, the, what we do, or, or, however, what we do have a problem with is the titanium, because this is still the original pathetic system that I built up. I essentially, I need to build another one of these here for doing, but doing titanium instead of silicon. So that shouldn't be too difficult. I could probably copy and paste this and then just reprogram all of the inserters. Um, although I imagine titanium doesn't have the greedy recipe. Uh, oh no, that's still two to one. So yeah, it would actually be exactly the same as this, <laughs> and we'll have that. Yeah, so put that in over here and feed in, into into this tower, and then then we'll have enough titanium to keep everything satisfied. But at the moment, as you can see, it's just not it, it's it's not good enough. We take 400 of the 400 away each to each time. As soon as a, as soon as it gets over 400, a um, a uh, transport vessel comes over, claims it, and then we'll fly over and grab it. So as soon as this gets to 800, it'll disappear again because we just don't have enough of it down on uh, on the other planet, uh, Alifa 2. Uh, so we need, yeah, we need we need a lot more titanium. So that's going to be another thing on the to-do list to get done on uh, next Wednesday. Um, otherwise, things seem to be going fairly well. Yes, there's some, going to be some fairly advanced stuff that I'm going to be trying to build in the next um, in the next session because I'm going to be trying to make purple science. Um, in, in its own town, but otherwise things are going well. We've got four machines here that are still building the um, solar sails at the rate we've been doing before. We've got, if we look at the Dyson sphere, we're using like two thirds. So it tends to be between about two thirds and three quarters of the uh, of the amount of power we're generating. So that seems to be okay. We're uh, we're all right there. Um, power on these planets. I, I don't know how that's getting on. Let's have a look. Um, at the moment, absolutely brilliantly, but if we look back in, a bit further back in time, this is probably when the smelters were running, and this is probably when I was trying to charge my robot. So, so the smelters do pull a lot more power through, but it's still well within what we're capable of providing here, so that's okay. I think power situation on the other planet is pretty similar, so we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay for power. Um, I just need to carry on expanding. Um, it looks like I'm going to need, I say, need more coal, need more titanium, need more oil, or more and more oil refining particularly. 
so i'll work on all of those next time and we'll see how that go how how i get on with that so yes thank you for watching um i hope you've enjoyed this enjoyed this catch-up video come along on wednesday to see me actually playing this live and trying to solve all these problems i've been talking about come along on monday to see the um to see us play me and some friends playing uh, factorio space exploration with crastorio 2 we're going doing quite well there i think we should probably be going to space in the next uh, in the next stream so that's going to be very exciting Come along on Fridays and Saturdays to watch the catch-up videos for those streams. You've just missed this week's ones, but they'll be still be available on the channel if you want to, if you want to, uh, if you do want to watch them as, as, as catch-up. And um, there's the odd other video coming out here, there, and everywhere. I think there's a Factorio tutorial coming out on Tuesday, so that's uh, definitely worth checking out. Talking about um, make, making spaceships and uh, how, how and how to how to program them in a little bit more detail, because apparently I didn't talk about it enough last time. Uh, don't forget to check out the stream sponsor and the, or the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. Go to trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays. They do hosting services for Factorio. They'll, they'll host you a Factorio server or a Minecraft server or, or stuff like that. You know, they do the sort of things you need when you want to when you want to sh share share a server and play and not have to worry about someone's home internet connection bringing the bringing the uh, ping times down for everybody else. Uh, if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get twenty percent off and everyone will be happy. So yeah, please go along and do that. Right, I think that's everything I have to say to you. Thank you for watching. Um, don't, don't forget to check out all the other stuff on the plat on the channel. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to this video because according to YouTube stats, it says that only about a third of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you're in the um, non-subscribe part of that, please make please please change that. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later.